What's going on, everybody? There are men's hoops, women's hoops, and just ACC games galore this weekend. We want you to get ready for what should be some fairly easy games for the ACC, or will they be caught slipping? You know, it's not uncommon for some of these teams. Tyler Aki, locked on Syracuse, is joining the show. It all goes down right now. <laughs> On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Tyler Aki in the building, Locked On Syracuse host. I want to make sure you are hype about it because I'm feeling good about you being our basketball expert for the week. <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot of pressure now. You've said a lot no of pressure, pressure. Like, but I guess... <laughs> It's tough to follow up Drake after his after his Florida State debacle. I mean, that show was wild. I, I can't believe. Uh, I, I'm surprised, like he even said yes to join. Uh, that right, show. right. I'm surprised that he wasn't. I'm surprised like, he wasn't I, occupied ahead. by all the Twitter spaces out there. I love I that. Just that became a say. thing. <laughs> I love that that just became a thing overnight. Like his guy Sam just took a lunch break and said, "Hey, let's do a space." And, and then all of a sudden, half of Twitter was in said space. I've never I seen mean, so many blue checks. J J Jack Dorsey was probably like in the Twitter lab, thinking to himself, "Like, oh my god, like we've never had this sort of traffic." And then he needed to like get some extra servers and stuff like that back at Twitter HQ or something. Listen, no doubt. Guys, today's episode is brought to you by NetSuite. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system to power your growth. Head to netsuite.com slash locked on NCAA for special end of year financing on the number one financial system for growing businesses. Tyler Aki has a team of his own that is trying to get things together. So we're going to go over all of these great games happening through the weekend. I do agree that FSU is trying to figure themselves out. I know you were not helping them figure it out on the basketball court from the men's side. <laughs> Yeah, Jersey Drake had a moment of just undoing because he said, not only is my football team going through it, but now my basketball team, which must be a basketball school, and it's not necessarily the case. Yeah, that's got to be frustrating for Florida State, where athletics is means so much. And you've got a football program that's notoriously great. You've got a basketball program that's always on the up and up, it feels like, and mm -hmm. has certainly put together a couple of really nice seasons now. But yeah, tough times down in Tallahassee, and and uh, God bless Drake. I mean, <laughs> God's plan. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. All right, let's start with some Friday night matchups tonight. If you are taking your talents to bet online, I know you want to get ready, and you're like, who do I need to have my money on? Virginia Tech will play St. Bonaventure in the Basketball Hall of Fame shootout, along with Richmond and NC State and Wake Forest and Charlotte. Now, on paper, you say St. Bonaventure, Richmond, Charlotte, okay, maybe not. But at the same time, we're looking at these ACC teams. Like, who do we trust to exceed expectations? Because they have an NC State team who can play with the best of Purdue, but also can struggle against, you know, teams like Colgate. So what do we got going on? What are your thoughts on these Friday night matchups? Is there any of that stand out? Or are you looking to see anything from some of these ACC squads? Well, I think this is actually a really under the radar sort of weekend here that you've got going on because you look at a team like St. Bonaventure taking on Virginia Tech and like the Bonnies are good. They're a yeah. good team. They have been. They've been a tournament team these past couple of seasons. So they're nothing to joke around with. Um, they, they've only had two losses so far this season and they've already taken down four teams inside of Ken Palm's top set or top 80 right now. So they've put together some nice wins. This is going to be a good little challenge for Virginia tech. I expect this to be a really good game because Virginia tech is trying to find themselves right now yeah. out of the gate. They looked super, super strong, but since then they've now lost four of their last six games. Haven't looked super impressive in, in a lot of them as well. So I think you got to be a little bit frustrated because Virginia tech, it seemed like they were almost primed to take that number two spot in the ACC and now all of a sudden they find themselves in a giant cluster again because <laughs> it looked like they were maybe close to separating from the pack. But now it feels like you're almost back at square one. Yeah, we should we could do a whole show on identity crisis for all of <laughs> all these teams. Crisis. It's like everyone except Duke, it feels like it is in some sort of uh, crisis alert right now. Yeah, no doubt. Then you have a Richmond and NC State, NC State team that just came off a very head scratching loss against Purdue. You knew that they were supposed to win that game. And I think that's was the most frustrating yeah. because you kind of see how confident they could be and how well they could do. But it's always the what ifs, the shoulda, coulda, woulda's. And I don't want that to always be NC State's narrative. 
I get why NC State fans are frustrated. Like you had mm-hmm. the number one team in the country. Obviously, they've dipped in the poll since, but you've had one of the top teams in the country on the ropes. Mm-hmm. But I think that game, at least from my perspective, told me a lot more about Purdue than it did about NC State. Listen, NC State's already working at a deficit this season without Manny Bates, one of their best players. Um, and listen, NC State really doesn't have a quote unquote bad loss this year. Mm-hmm. Like, They've lost to the teams that are better than them. They've beaten the teams that they're better than. Yeah. It's not, kind of tough to to be in that middle. And I know it's frustrating because you can't pull off the big win. And like you even look at some of these games that they've lost. Oklahoma State, six point loss. Mm-hmm. Louisville, five point loss. Purdue, an overtime loss. Yeah. Like it's tough. It's frustrating to be at that sort of juncture. But this Richmond game might be the get right for them. And, and Absolutely. for their sake, like this is a chance to beat a team that is quote unquote better than you. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that when you look at it, neutral site, all that stuff, and I think that this team is ready to break through at a certain point. Again, I, I don't think they're going to be at the top of the top in the ACC, but if you can get yourself into that middle tier, I feel like that'll be a success for NC State. But is getting into that middle tier going to be enough ultimately to save the job of a guy like Kevin Keats? Who great question. And then finally, we're going to talk about the kings of the conference, Wake Forest, because I just knew, you knew oh, Wake yeah. Forest was going to be at the I top mean, of the could, helm. Who could have missed that, <laughs> right? Coach Forbes definitely had everyone sleeping last season. He told us in the ACC tip-off that we are should not play with the Demon Deacons, and certainly that's what we're seeing here. I mean, 10-1, and one, now while the books are a little bit cooked, fine, whatever, they're still a 10-1 and one team, and they're you know better than a lot of what we went into the season trying to get out of the Madonna's Williams doing his thing right now they're up against charlotte should be a good win for them but they have tripped up they had had some scary stressful moments throughout some of their games already they've been able to overcome can they still do it here against the niners so i look at wake forest and and you brought up the record there not only is the record impressive but per ken palm they have the number one strength of schedule within the conference Mm -hmm. so ranking all 14 of the the, or 15 i guess in this case in in the acc they have the number one strength of schedule. And to yeah. be 10 and 1 through that gauntlet, I think is pretty impressive. And you've got to win against Northwestern, who's a top 40 Ken Palm team. Virginia Tech, that's always good to pick up a conference win. You got another power five win under your belt against Oregon State. So I I've been impressed. And I think it's going to be a nice little ease into the ACC for them with Charlotte. And then you start ACC play for real with with BC, Louisville, and then Miami. Like those are three very winnable games if you're Wake Forest. And this is going to be one of those times where, all right, we're going to see, can you beat the teams that you're better than or that you're not necessarily better than? Kind of like the opposite of what we've seen with Virginia or uh, with uh, NC State, where Mm -hmm. if you can start beating those teams consistently, and they've already done it a couple times this year, but can you do it in your conference? Because ultimately, those are the games that matter a little bit more. No doubt about that. Now, guys, I want to talk about Tenet Suite. It is the number one in cloud financial system to power your growth with visibility and control of your finances, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. With NetSuite, you can automate your processes and close your books in no time while staying well ahead of your competition. 93% of surveyed businesses increase their visibility and control after upgrading to NetSuite. So over 20,000 businesses already use NetSuite. And right now, through the end of the year, NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind financing program to those ready to upgrade at NetSuite.com slash locked on NCAA. That's NetSuite.com slash locked on NCAA. As we mentioned at the top of the show, of course, if you are getting in on the betting action, we do not want you to be without. There are many games happening this weekend for ACC Hoops men's and women's, so get in on the action with Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports it is simply where the game starts. They remain your number one source at betonline.ag with this new updated desktop mobile website to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code locked on. Go to betonline.ag. Tyler Aki here on the show, locked on Syracuse host. You can find him talking about all things Syracuse. You got hoops, you got football. Dino Baber still has a job, all of that good stuff, right? A little more but... hoops than football. We'll, we'll put it that way. <laughs> Which is totally Although fine. All American, Sean Tucker. All American. There we go. There we go. Shout out to our shout out to our guy. Maybe he'll get the jersey yeah. next season. I don't think he wants it anymore. I think yeah, he's past he's that. over it. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just glad he stayed. Like, I'm surprised he's not in the transfer portal. Jameer Listen, Gibbs would like to I'm gonna say this, all right? Like, 
Uh-huh. If I was Clemson, that's the first guy I'm calling. You got a transfer exodus at running back. You got an All American yeah. that Dabo likes. Kind of, you're gonna have a much better offensive line there. You could turn yourself into a second round pick that way. You know, see, we're not gonna get off task. We're supposed to be talking about <laughs> basketball today. Now you've got my head spinning. I'm like, please just don't go to Clemson. Like, be like a How about UNC? Go to Alabama. How about, how about UNC? Oh, you want to at UNC? Well, see, I told the, I told UNC that they need to call Jameer. That's what I, I said. The first okay. call you need to make is Jameer Gibbs. But I would take Sean Tucker as well. Honestly, I mean, Tyson, Ty Chandler did not do awful, but I think that offensive line just don't go to a don't go to a like same. You know what I'm saying? You got to elevate. Yeah. Don't go to an even par. Yeah. Again, All right, we've hit our football quota. Line. We've hit okay. our football quota today. <laughs> Saturday basketball: Pittsburgh takes on St. John's. Bear Dixon takes on Virginia. Louisville takes on Western Kentucky. We'll start with those first half of those games. And listen, Pittsburgh. It's rough. It's getting ugly out here. Three oh and seven to start on the year. Having to play St. John's, an eight and two team in the Gotham Classic. I think the clock is ticking. Do you see Coach Capels staying throughout the entire season? I'll say he stays <laughs> through the season. Okay. But that's not necessarily a ringing endorsement either. It may be one of those like buyout situations where oh, you mm. let him hang around and let's well, so say yeah. you don't have to pay some absurd amount of money for him to not coach but yeah i uh, listen i will he be back probably not like and if i he mean what doesn't what, come back is he going to go to duke and help them out like he did when he was helping out coach k i mean i it seems like the perfect <laughs> landing spot because what do you know there's going to be an assistant spot opening up right because john so. shire is going to be taking the the helm so, yeah, I mean, it might be the natural landing spot, the return spot for him. Like, is he just going to be Lane Kiffin where he'll go latch onto Saban and then come back and then try to do this th- whole thing over again? And then, oh, things don't work out. Latch back on at a big program and try to reboot your career again. Who knows what it's <laughs> going to be like, right? Yeah. But, no, yeah, I mean, Pitt is in a really, really bad spot right now. Um, St. John's, I mean, I really think you look across the board at this ACC schedule for this weekend and – you've got a lot of really good non-conference matchups. Mm-hmm. A lot of mm-hmm. really good non-conference. I mean, even like the, the you've got the Crossroads Classic in Indiana mm-hmm. with uh, Indiana and Notre Dame. Like, this is just a, a really good weekend of non-conference hoops, which you usually don't get on a December 18th-ish weekend, like the week before That's Christmas. Fair. You usually get some of those cupcake opponents that are like your local schools that you, you come to. Your fair Dixons of the world. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Who is on the schedule this week for Virginia? <laughs> Which Virginia could use a pick me up. They're struggling. It's yeah. not what we're used to seeing of the Cavaliers. Louisville play Western Kentucky, as mentioned. You said about the Crossroads Classic, Indiana and Notre Dame. I'm excited for Blake Wesley holding it down for the hometown. I got that vibe. I love the vibe of representing for your city. UCLA, North Carolina remains to be seen in the CBS Sports Classic. Will they play? There has yeah. been some rumors about the UCLA COVID protocols, and it seems like everyone has been touched in the sports world by the COVID yeah. bug. So they won't be able to make up a game, which is stressful, I'm sure, for you know your athletic department. But speaking of making up games, Duke playing Loyola, Maryland. Now, I think that's a little shady because you could have played Maryland one last time for Coach K. <laughs> Y'all could have figured out how to go to College Park and hold it down. I think we all of the like old school ACC people are missing that matchup, that rivalry right there. I mean, we knew that wasn't <laughs> happening, right? He, it should have, though. Co- it Coach, have. Coach K was not going on the road to play another Big Ten opponent yeah. and risk embarrassment. I True. mean, even like... I, I get that this came about after they had scheduled the game with Loyola, Maryland, but like you could play Iona at the garden, Rick Patino, Ooh, coach K one more time. Like all <laughs> that stuff is sort of on the table. Nostalgia, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you're, you're coach K like you can tell Loyola, Maryland to F off, right? <laughs> like, like you've got that much cachet in the sport. Like <laughs> you're true. already the devil. All right. Yeah, you're already the yeah. devil. Yeah. So what, what, what's one more middle finger to, to some little program here? That's fair enough. To, I like that point. I like that point. UCF playing a Florida State really good matchup there in terms of Florida State trying yeah. to bounce back, as we mentioned. USC playing Georgia Tech, a Georgia Tech that's trying to find its way. Clemson playing South Carolina in pretty fairly even matchup. And then Syracuse getting a little Lehigh action. I, lo- I personally will always love Lehigh for reasons of only having them beat Duke in an NCAA <laughs> tournament. That's the only reason I love Lehigh. That's the only reason Shout I remember Shout out to CJ McCollum. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, he will always be my guy, forever my guy, for only that reason. Yep. <laughs> what are you feeling about Syracuse, though, as they are really trying to find a rhythm, sitting at the middle, you know, but 500 team, the identity crisis that we talked about at the top still kind of feels here with the Orange Men. So I mentioned how Wake Forest had the toughest strength of schedule in the conference so far. Syracuse yeah. has the second toughest strength mm-hmm. of schedule in the conference so far. And if you look at some of the matchups, I actually think Syracuse has probably played the tougher schedule. When you look at, they went down to Atlantis, played Auburn. You had the the game against Indiana in the ACC Big Ten. You had your opener on the road against Florida State. You played neutral against Villanova. Like, those are tough games. Yeah. And I also look at it, you might have noticed there, I said a lot of road games and a lot of neutral site games. This is a team that through their first 10 games usually plays eight or nine home games. Mm -hmm. And right now they have only played four. Guess Mm -hmm. where their next four games are. They are at home. Yeah. So this could be the little pick me up that they need. And again, maybe, especially when you've got a team with so many new players on it as well, getting them acclimated, getting them into a rhythm. And I think fatigue was probably setting in a little bit as well. When you look at they, I mean, they went through a stretch where they played, what is that? Four games in six days. Mm -hmm. Like that's a lot to ask for a college student athlete. And yeah. now they're going to start to space these games out a little bit. They've had a week of rest in between since the loss to Georgetown. And then they're, they're only going to be playing three games really over the next two weeks. Mm-hmm. So that should be the adequate rest. And you get, you're at home too. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that's the, the get right for them. Yeah. And I want to get your thoughts here on this game before I have to spend some time talking about my lovely built bars, but UCLA, North Carolina, let's say it does happen, right? Mm-hmm. Even if it didn't, fictitiously, let's talk about if we were to preview it for real, what would this mean for Carolina to win and beat a UCLA? It would validate, I think, a, a lot of what they've done so far. I mean, look at look at Carolina's losses right now, all right? You lost to Purdue, a really, really good Purdue team. You lost to Tennessee, one of the most defensive-minded teams in the country, um, and you scored 72 points on them. Yeah. So. I, I don't think you have bad losses right now. You're eight and two. You've taken care of business against some of the teams on your your schedule so far. You have a conference win by 17 points. You you beat the hell out of Michigan. Like you have good wins on your your ledger so far. And yeah. this would just be one of those kind of validating wins. Like you don't have the the win per se that you you really feel. I, I guess the Michigan game you feel really great about just because of the margin of victory. Even though Michigan has fallen off a little bit. Mm-hmm. But UCLA, neutral site, I, I think this would be a really monumental win because you're talking about a bona fide top 10 team here yeah. In, in, yeah, in UCLA. And that'll give them momentum. I think it'll certainly help the confidence, I think, for a group of guys that really haven't had a lot of it. I mean, yeah. look historically with some of these guys. Armando Baycott thought he'd be in the NBA by now. Yeah, I mean, Caleb Love probably thought he'd be in the NBA <laughs> right now. <laughs> and then you've got like Dawson Garcia. He he's coming from a, a losing place in Marquette. Brady mm-hmm. Manic underwhelming at Oklahoma. Like all these guys, it's just a collection of kind of underwhelming. And mm. this would be one of those things that might turn them and get them over the hump and give them a little bit of confidence for maybe the first time in their careers. You know, that's a great point that you bring up in terms of underwhelming because I think all of them, they talk about how they should be a national championship team, but they have to prove it. And when we started up the season, you saw no defense. And like the season before, we saw no offense. And maybe this is finally the team that's going to put both together. And so I'm excited about what is to come for them, but I know this is a key. They have to play well. Even if they yeah. lose, they have to abs- – they cannot get blown out. They can't make it look ugly because, you know, everyone stresses about the Blue Bloods. If they don't, you know, score 55,000, they're like, oh, my God, they suck. Right. So I think, I think it's all about how they play. Yeah. yeah, well, in particular defensively because yeah. you've now strung together five strong defensive performances after not having a shred of that in your first five games. So if you can continue to build on some defensive, because ultimately defense won you that game against Michigan. And if you continue to lean in on this defense a little bit more, get that side of the ball going. I don't know if it's something that coach Davis has stressed in practice or what, but it's something that is certainly coming to the forefront right now for this UNC team. And, Again, a win against UCLA, I think, would go a long way for all these guys. No doubt about that. want to just talk 
overview. Should we panic? Should we be in a calm space about how our teams are? You never know with different people on the show. So it's always great to make sure that we get the ducks in a row. But this holiday season, I want to remind you guys that through November 30th to December 23rd, you have opportunity to get some delicious holiday-based healthy built bars. So many flavors, built bars to give you that extra fuel. People are certainly passionate about their faves, whether it's cookies and cream, double chocolate, peanut butter brownie, or mint brownie cherry, even sometimes raspberry. You can take those, dip them in your favorite hot chocolate. Maybe you just want them on the go as you're heading to your family travels for the holiday season, but make sure you get in on something that's completely delicious and also healthy. Calories are low, sugar is low, but the benefits are definitely high. Like some of these marshmallow retreats around the holidays, I strongly encourage you to try Built Bar Puffs. Okay, go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. Again, that's LOCK15 at built.com for 15% off your order. Wrapping up the show here, Tyler Aki locked on Syracuse host and panic button. Are you feeling like you're about to touch touch it? Or are you just like, cool, it's great. We're only 10, 12 games in. Please relax. On oh, just the conference as a whole? Yep. I'm I'm not optimistic. That's for sure. Cause I don't I don't see that second group forming right yeah. now. Like you expected that second group to be Carolina, Virginia, Florida State. Yeah, like Duke came in in a tier on their own. A- yeah. As much as it pains both you and I to admit, like they have been in a tier on their own and they probably have the best win in the conference so far. Then you move about the rest of the any like a team like Syracuse and Virginia Tech, could they get in the second tier and establish maybe a deeper second tier? But right now, yeah. I mean, it might be tough to get six tournament teams when you got the the Wake Forest and the Miamis of the world trying to carry the water for your conference. It's it's, it's not good. <laughs> it's a little it's dicey. Not good. It's I not mean, Boston College, be right now. yeah, Boston College is sitting at the top, and they lost a team like Albany. So, got to regroup a bit. <laughs> we got to figure right. out who we are, who are the top players. But maybe with more conference play, are we going to see more of the same kind of like we did in football, where everyone just eats each other up? And that's not a good thing. Not a great that thing. is not a good thing. Like <laughs> you want the bottom to be bad in this conference and you want the top to be good. Yeah. Because you you cannot afford to have a a pit go in there and spoil Louisville one night and maybe ruin the the Cardinals' chances of getting into the NCAA tournament. You can't afford that. If you want to have the the health of the conference as good as it is. Now, I don't think Pitt's gonna go and play a spoiler on anyone, but who knows? Maybe a Georgia Tech does or mm. an NC State does. And they play spoiler and, and maybe take someone out of the, the NCAA tournament. There's bid stealers. And, and this cannot be one of those leagues where you're having late season bid stealers. Um, and not even like saying that, oh, an NC State's going to leapfrog someone into the tournament. What I mean by bid stealers is taken away from your own, like cannibalizing the conference is not going to be a good thing. Yeah, no doubt. I completely agree. I think at the end of the day right now, we're just seeing the uh, identity crisis teams where everyone's trying to figure out their way, but maybe we'll see stronger leaps. Maybe it's just going to take this group a little extra money to find their way. As you get into that January conversation, that's when I might start getting a little closer to the panic button. If we don't see, you know, strong change, if we see more inconsistency, you know, big wins from teams that you're supposed to beat, but horrible losses from teams that you're absolutely not even in competition with, then, okay, how many teams can we actually talk about getting into the NCAA tournament. We know we are known as the conference that gets like 11 people in that bad boy. Right now it's feeling like four and a possible. It's like spades. Right. It's like four and a possible. We got, <laughs> yeah. we, we got some we got some guarantees and then we got some people that, you know, we could just depending on how the cards play out. But overall college landscape, I think that's really how it is as well. Uh, I, and again, I think this year it's been a pretty top heavy sort of con mm-hmm. or not just conference country. Really, yeah. as a whole, like I think everyone talks about, oh, the bubble is notoriously weak every single year. I don't think it's just going to be the bubble this year. I think it might be the last 10 teams in. Yeah. Like, even if you look at some of Joe Lenardi's early bracketology right now, and it's not impressive, some of those teams. <laughs> so, if you can get on a late season run and maybe you don't have a, a spoiler in the conference tournament, but you have a team like Louisville go out and win two, three games in the conference tournament. You have a Notre Dame, a Virginia Tech, a Syracuse. You have one of those teams that gets one of those final spots because of their conference tournament run. Then all of a sudden, the conference might look a little bit better. But at the end of the day, you might just be putting lipstick on a pig at that point because these teams aren't very good right now. 
at that's least, and that's fair. but that's right now. Yeah, there is still three months of basketball to be played. Yeah, and that's kind of I guess the saving grace right now. But you look at some of these teams out of the SEC, the Big Ten, the Big Twelve, like they look light years better. Yeah, you yeah. haven't seen you've seen in pretty much mm-hmm. every conference a surprise team emerge. You have not seen that in the ACC this year. Beyond Duke. Right. But like you you knew Duke was going to be good. You That's just fair. haven't seen that surprise team emerge That's so true. far. That's like you true. look at the Big 12, Iowa State, I believe they're projected to finish last. They're undefeated right now at 10 or 11 and 0. You've got in, in the the um uh Pac-12, you've got USC, they're undefeated still at like 11 and 0. So it's mm-hmm. like all these sort of surprise teams that are popping up and they could play spoiler Arizona out of the Pac-12 too. They're they're popping up yeah. and they're one of like the top five teams in the country right now. Maybe I thought it was going to be a surprise that Duke's team with all of their good stars still didn't do well. But maybe I'll wait for that for tournament time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll wait for that for tournament time. I'm Listen, so excited it, there. <laughs> it, if it's a one bid league, just please don't let it be Duke. Please don't let it be Duke. <laughs> hey, and somebody, Tyler. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. Please remind folks where they can find you. Follow your work. Yeah, you can check us out, Locked on Syracuse, every single weekday, Monday through Friday. Myself and Tim Leonard, we're on Twitter, at LO underscore Syracuse. We're on YouTube, so subscribe to the show there as well. And you can find myself at Tyler, A-K-I underscore. Man, oh man, you guys have a great and safe weekend. We will be back on Monday to recap a lot of these great games, both men and women. And then we will get into the great conversation of what is to come. I'm sure there will be some sort of football scandal. I just feel it. That's the way you know things Ooh, are you're working. There's going to be a scandal. I'm feeling, I'm feeling. I don't know. Unfortunately, you want to know the way a... I'm feeling? I, uh, I think okay. s- someone's going to go on pause this weekend. Ooh. Someone's going on COVID pause this weekend. It's yeah. it's rip it's ripping through every sport right now, and you're starting to see it start to rear its ugly head in college athletics. A lot of games already being canceled. How it's- did we get through last season? Because I'm sitting here thinking, like, did Omicron just say, "No, nah, I'm not playing with y'all for real," and just go crazy? Because we were doing okay last year. Yeah, I mean, I'm not here to play doctor. All right, <laughs> I, I, I I'm taking my scrubs <laughs> off right now. I'll put my stethoscope on and say, at the end of the day, I understand it's about money, but we got to figure out how to make it about health too. Do I don't, you know, say do whatever you want to do, but you know, just stay away from me, okay? Wear your mask, wash your hands. All righty, yeah. <laughs> Tyler Aki for Candace Cooper. Until next time.